Howdy again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher. Welcome to my home foundry. Let's have a little fun today and make a casting. Is everybody happy? In the last two videos, I made these little aluminum paperweights of an anvil, two different sizes, and I made them from uh, 3D printed patterns. Go back and watch those videos if you haven't already seen them. But just a little different take today is I'm really going to do the same thing. So if you don't want a repetition, you know, maybe you ought to click off on this now. But I am going to pour this one out of lead instead of aluminum and we'll compare the weights. I'm using a different flask. I'm going to use this a little aluminum flask. I don't think I've ever used it. Top part's called the coat, bottom is the drag. It's even smaller than this one. It was perfect to use in a junior high, and I think these were sold to schools. Perfect to use in a junior high because a small boy could handle them and it didn't take much sand. Maybe the teacher only had a hundred pounds of sand or fifty pounds of sand and it would have been just perfect for that. The thing I don't like about it that there is no uh, rim in here or any way to retain the sand. Uh, the sand literally could slip out of there if you're careless. Normal flasks have some kind of ridge that prevents that. Normal. This is the drag portion of the flask. Notice how I have it positioned on a spacer board simply because it's not going to lay flat if you don't have a board with holes in it or some other way to do it. And then taking the pattern, the half without the pins, I'm going to lay that in there and there's not a whole lot of room. I have to leave enough room for the uh, sprue. A little parting sand as always. Some people use baby powder. I'm going to use this little riddle sieve, eighth inch, and it's only about what, five, six inches in diameter. It almost looks like a toy and it's almost cute. But I like to sift the sand that will be that will actually be in contact with the pattern. I have the luxury of owning a mini mite sand muller and I never make a mold without mulling the sand first and sometimes adding oil as necessary. This is Petrobon sand. Now I will flip it over. Now I place the other half of the pattern. Put the cope on. Serve it generously. And I'm ready to mold.
now to cut the sprue and I've already marked the location which will be right there Now let's separate the two halves. Missed the mark a little bit. Oh well. Now let's see if the patterns withdraw. Now to reassemble in the correct manner so that the index lines mark up, line up, like that. That's very important. I cannot tell you the number of castings over the years that were made like this when we broke them open. I should have kept some for novelty purposes. Okay. This thing is ready to pour. I need to get my lead melting equipment, my plumber's furnace, if you will, ready. Now you've seen me do this countless times. There's my little plumber's furnace with a pot. I will scoop it out with a ladle. This is propane fired. And my source of lead is old type lead, wheel weights, just anything I can scrounge up. Some of these are ingots that I made. It says Lyman on them, but it's just a Lyman mold. There were bullets too, yeah, there were just all kinds, wherever I can source it or whenever lead comes up. Now let's have some words of warning. First of all, lead is a heavy metal. It is toxic. It's a killer. Don't touch it. Don't play with it. Matter of fact, don't do this. This is for education, not education, entertainment only. But the other thing is when you're working with molten metal, make sure you have on gloves, face shield, and so on. And you must not have any moisture or water around. Water will instantly turn to steam and throw the lead, the molten metal, whatever it is, in all directions. So let's fire up this little beauty. And that will take about... 15 minutes. You remember these duck decoy weights that I will never use and Jordan didn't seem to have any interest in them. Now wash your hands before you eat a sandwich or a candy bar or smoke a cigarette. Oh that's right the cigarettes are far more dangerous than the lead. And you will also need a ladle. And I hope that this is big enough to where I can get it all in one pour, but I don't think it is. So I hope that is not a problem. This must be preheated a little bit before adding the lead. A scraper, just an old piece of galvanized, and one of your wife's big serving spoons. It's starting to melt. A short lesson in hydraulics. Lead is a very heavy metal, but even uh, iron castings or very large aluminum castings, the hydraulic pressure of pouring it in can cause the two halves of the flask to separate. That's why they often clamp them or put weights on them. 
Now I told you there's no ridges in here and I have seen sand just buckle up like an earthquake. So I'm going to put some weights on there. It's not a whole lot, but I think, and it may not be necessary for this size, but you know, I'm a safety man. If you look back at the beginning of the video, you will see that I'm wearing suspenders and a belt. Okay, let's pour some lead. Not enough. There I go. I knew that one ladle wouldn't be enough. I hope there's not a cold shut. Can you see the lead shrink a little bit? I hope it doesn't shrink in the thickest part of the anvil and cause a sinkhole. Okay, it's been 15 or 20 minutes. Let's open it up. There won't be much smoke like there is with aluminum. Also, the sand doesn't fall off as freely because the sand doesn't char. So I'm going to take just a minute to scrape that off camera. We'll come back and look at it. Quite heavy compared to the All right, it's cooled down and I brushed it off as well as I can with this little Horror Freight brush. And we'll go downstairs now. We'll examine it a little bit, uh, well, a lot more thoroughly after I cut off the gate. Now machining and cutting and sawing and filing on lead is a lot different than other metals because it's so soft and malleable. I will start by sawing off the gate using a coarse hand hacksaw and we'll see how that works and I always stay a little bit away from the actual casting. The kids ruin so many castings by sawing into them as they remove their gate. So I like to stay a full eighth of an inch away and a long steady stroke and it is sawing pretty well. Alright, that's a lot of sawing for a soft metal. Well there it is. Now, when you work with something like this, do not hold it in the vise without protection because you'll put vise marks on it. If, when I sawed it, I let it fall on the ground, it would dent the horn or other parts of it. What I think I'm going to do now, before I even take a file to it, maybe I'll knock a little of this off, like right here, and I'm going to go over to the milling machine and see if I can mill the bottom, if it's even possible. To mill lead without special tools that are designed for the lead. I expected a sinkhole right here, remember? And I really don't have one. Finish is pretty good. I have found out that with sand casting lead, the finish isn't as good as aluminum because of the, the extra weight and mass tends to force the metal uh, into the between the particles of sand. The anvil is on parallels and I am gripping it as hard as I dare because I don't want to squeeze it or leave marks on it, but yet I don't want it to fly out when I start milling. Quite smooth, and the Niagara Cutter did not load up either. 
I was running it at a medium speed and now I will mill the top and I really don't see any purpose in showing much of that. This lead files very nicely with a double cut, relatively coarse file. And I'm just cleaning up the parting line a little bit. I don't really care a whole lot how good the finish is. And then the half round works good in here. Just doesn't take much. Break the corners. Be sure and dispose of your lead shavings and waste responsibly. Aluminum, lead. And by the way, my fingers are black. That's black from lead, so I really have to scrub when I'm done. And uh, avoid, I won't smoke a cigarette. This is so much heavier, obviously. That's what this whole video is about. But I'll tell you the purpose for this. This is meant as a paperweight in offices that have air conditioning. Not a whole lot of breeze. But if you're in an old office building with the windows open and papers flying everywhere, you need a heavy man-size type paperweight made out of lead. How is that for a reason? All right, let's weigh the two and see what the difference is. Remember, they were made from the same pattern. You think it's going to be two or three times as heavy? What's your guess? Aluminum. 129 grams. Lead. 507 grams. Someone do the math and do a ratio or look it up and find out how much this would weigh if it was made of gold. Probably double the lead. I'm guessing. Shiny surfaces do not photograph very well on my camera anyway, but it's a pretty darn good finish. It will scratch very, very easily. Well, that's it, people. Did you like it? If you did like it, consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribing. Now, you don't have to do it. Just consider it. Hope you liked the video. This is Tubal Kane saying so long for now, and I'll see you in my next video. Be sure and watch the two previous videos where I actually made the plastic pattern. So long for now.